Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. And all the time.
hands and worship him. If truly, if truly you have been saved, worship him. Exalt his holy name. He died and he arose. Celebrate the King of Kings.
Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. But in the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead, twice in the he who raised Christ from the dead will also give you, I mean, we also give your life multiples through his spirit who dwells in you. Sickness is going to come back now. Disease is going to disappear now. Infirmities is going to get out now. The Bible says, in the same spirit. Ha ha ha. The Bible says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty.
Go home. He's not talking to pastor. He's talking to you, Sister Mary. Sister Kid is talking to you. Go. All right? Sister Jennifer is talking to you. Go. And do what? Preach the gospel. So by the grace of God, we want to go next week. Sunday. I mean, this coming Saturday, we'll be doing mass evangelism very close to us again. We'll go with tracks and we'll go with this word of the Spirit, which is the word of God, to tell people that Jesus is alive. So I want to encourage you to come between 10 a.m. to around 12. Okay? God bless us with that. Then number two, next week Sunday is our hours of liberty and miracle service. So on that day um, will be there will be anointing service. Through of God going to anoint every one of us for the next day. Amen. So I want you to prepare to encourage you that to fast on Saturday. Then when you are coming to church on Sunday, don't eat breakfast. Don't drink coffee in the morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because some of us, when we wake up in the morning, we don't even pray. First thing we go and do is to drink coffee. I'm not saying it's bad as a choice. Amen. But please, on Sunday morning, next week Sunday, come fasting. Amen. Except if you have health issues. But if you still have faith, you can say, God, this health issue, I'm going to fast. And I know that after the anointing service, I will receive my healing. The Bible says, the just shall live by faith. Amen? Amen? But if your faith cannot carry it, take your medication. <laughs> Praise God. But fast. Tell somebody, fast. Amen. Then, by the special grace of God, after service, we are going to have lunch, as we promised us last week. So there will be lunch for Easter. We celebrate. Amen. Amen. And the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Are we ready for the word of God? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you once again because you are the resurrection and the life. Lord, I ask you, Lord, that you speak to us this morning and give us understanding of your word. Spirit of God, I release myself unto you that you will speak to me through your children. And after the service, your name will be glorified. For in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. So this morning, I'll be speaking on the temptation of Jesus Christ. Amen. The temptation of Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you, I want to encourage you that within the short time that we are going to spend together, I want you to focus because I want to bring something out that is going to help us in our Christian journey. The temptation of Jesus Christ. Please turn your Bible to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. Hebrews Chapter 4, verse 15. For we do not have an high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. Hmm. But, was, but was in all points tempted as we are. Yes. Jesus. 
Jesus, the resurrected King, is exempted among all women because he died and on the third day he arose. Hallelujah. Is different among all the prophets, all the religious leaders that came. There's a particular one that told his followers that he said he's going to come back to life on the third day. After he died, he tried it, but don't that strike him.
was accepted. He beat death and sky. The Bible says, and his fourth principalities and powers, he made a public show. Let me tell you something. The death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, that is the essence of the I'm telling you. That is our hope. Because if he did not die and resurrected, we are still in bondage. But the Bible says, even the Son of Man has set free, is free indeed. So we are set free by His resurrection power. So, briefly this morning, I want to narrow the temptation of Jesus, the temptations of Jesus. The temptation that Jesus faced. He faced those temptations. But the good news is that he passed them. Amen? He faced those temptations, but he passed them. And if he did not pass those temptations, there will be nothing like resurrection. We cannot celebrate Easter today. Hallelujah. Are you ready with me? Please turn your Bible to the book of Matthew, chapter 4. Matthew, chapter 4, from verse 1 to 11. And let us see those temptations that our Lord Jesus Christ passed through and passed. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he has fasted 40 days and 40 nights, after all, he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Verse 5. Then the devil took him into the holy city. He set in on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, Issue 
of temptation. I will say it again. Jesus, our Savior, but he is also our example when it comes to the issue of temptation. And that is what we saw in those places that we read. He's our Savior at the same time. It's a good example for us to follow in time of Children of God, listen to me. Temptation will come to you and I, whether we like it or not. And if we yield to it, it will destroy our life. Our, it will destroy our life. Fasting 40 days and 40 nights. Is that not the easiest way to compromise? I feel okay, I feel the fasting. Okay, you ask me. To come, stop the bread. I have the power. I will do it. But it was a trial. I prophesied to you. By the time you anyone want to trap him, God will give you the sign of the Spirit to be able to know. I said, God will give you the sign of the Spirit to be able to know. In the name of Jesus, you will not enter Satan trap again. I said, you will not enter Satan trap again. In the name of Jesus. So what is temptation? What is temptation? It is a sense or desire to do something that is wrong or sinful. Temptation is a sense or desire to do something that is wrong or sinful. Number two, temptation is a tendency or urge to act. Or to feel in a particular way to walk contrary, contrary to God's word. The devil will always bring temptation on our way to do something contrary to the word. But in the name of Jesus, after today, you will not fall victim. I say you will not fall victim. You will not fall victim in the name of Jesus. Listen to this. Satan target everyone with temptation. But he especially tempts the righteous, the righteous person to sin. He target everyone. But he targets the righteous person to do what? To sin. Because you know that the moment you and I sin against God, God is upset. 
Receive the grace to live a righteous life. I said, Receive the grace to live a righteous life. In the name of Jesus. He will do everything to stop that prophecy. He will do everything within his power to stop the purpose of God. But I have a good news for you. You are unstoppable. You are drawing closer to him. That's why Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. You can only know him when you are closer to him. Hallelujah. I just met you for some few months. As I get closer to you, I know you more. Praise the Lord. And that is why it's very important to build the relationship. Amen? Because the more you spend time with God, the more you know Him. The more He reveals Himself to you, and the more He tells you about Himself. Because some of us, we don't really know much about the same. I told you about the manufacturer and the manual. Do you remember? That it is only the manufacturer that can tell you more about his products. The name of this man is sure, right? So if I want to make use of this man very well, I need to ask the manufacturer. And how do I know the manufacturer? It's by reading the manual. Hallelujah. Most of you carry iPhone 10, iPhone 100, iPhone 500. One million, I don't know how many iPhone it is. Some of you, when you bought the phone, you start using it. You don't even read the manual to know the function, how it works. You just want to post. That's iPhone. I'm using iPhone 1 million. Amen. I was listening to I was reading something on the on the internet. 
They took one lady in Nigeria, Africa. <laughs> you know what? This lady, 1.5 million, that's how much about five five thousand dollars plus or six thousand. Amen. So this lady went to go and buy iPhone. What's the latest one? 14. 14 plus or something. So she went to go and buy the iPhone. Before I move to number two, let me give you this point, bullet point. Time alone with God does not prevent temptation. Listen, it does not prevent it, but it will strengthen us to overcome it. Time alone with God will not prevent it, but it will strengthen us 
overcome. Because whether we like it or not, we will face temptation. God faced it. And Jesus is God. He faced it. But the good news is, He will overcome it. You will overcome yours. I say you will overcome yours. I say you will overcome yours. I say you will overcome yours. In the name of Jesus. So please, brother and sister, we tell your business and you have time for fashion, person, I mean for personal fellowship with God. Husband and wife that have children, plan to
Number three. So as to define the number three, we must walk with God every day. And especially be on guide and the time of spiritual victory. We must walk with God every day and be on guard. After what? Spiritual victory. Some of you now you have gotten the first job, the second one, the third one. School is going on, the school fees that you thought you cannot pay, you are paying it, you are using good car, you are driving. <laughs> now you are relaxed. Ah! The guy, your enemy, your adversary is targeting you. And he's looking for the time that you have got him. Ah! You just fell. In the name of Jesus, he will not meet you. He will not meet you. He will not meet you. Number three. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. That is why he was able to overcome the enemy. Number four. Be hard with the scripture. Be hard with the word of God. That is why you need to know the scripture. You need to read your Bible. Not only to read it, to memorize it. Because when it comes to attacking the bathroom, your Bible is not there. Pastor is not there. Concordance is not there to go and see the meaning. You must use the word at that moment. Because the only thing that Satan fears is the word of God. As you are writing up this morning, Linking that to resurrection, to the Easter that we are celebrating today, what am I trying to say? The devil will always bring temptation on your way to stop you in fulfilling your purpose. And so me, he fell like Adam and Eve. Everybody's free to have fire. Everybody's free to have fire. Not him. But he passed it. He passed it. He 
He passed it. And he died. He died. He was killed. And he went to heaven. To go and collect that key. That authority that was taken from, from Eden. And he gave to man. And I said, Go! What is that temptation that the devil is throwing to you? He's just bringing them to stop him. But the choice is yours. Jesus, the time and now, I can never abandon you. He's showing you what. Ah! Do you know what he means? He laughed at the woman telling you all those things. He said, the Bible said, he's showing the whole world and his glory. He's showing Dubai, America, Melbourne, everything. We just bow down for me. I will show you to you. <laughs> it's not like somebody show you briefcase full of dollars.
Maybe you have been falling to temptation, falling, falling, and falling, falling out. You need God, you need Jesus in your life. From the congregation, or you are watching your mind, I would like to tell you something. So for the people in that category, say, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me with your blood. Make me to be your child. And I will follow you for the rest of my life. From today, I say no to Satan. But I say yes to Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. So if you have said that sincerely, I would like to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all your children. That I've surrendered their lives to you. That I said, Jesus, I'm coming back to you. Father, I ask that you forgive them, hold them with your blood. And I pray that from this day, you will give them the grace and the power to resist temptation. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. So for those of us that have given our lives to Christ, if you go on our website, you see no life, put your name there and your pictures there so that we can be able to follow you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your work once again. We thank you once again for your death and your resurrection. If not because of that, we will not be who we are today. But Jesus, we say thank you. Lord, I pray for every one of us that the name of Jesus will not be a victim of temptation again. That when they even come, you will make a way of blessing for us. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And the people of God will say, Amen. 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 Let's sit there while we give our offerings.